A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The mountains shall melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. The, the Lord, Lord is king, king the, most the most high over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord, the Lord is, is king, king, the most, the most high, high over all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. 
Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we can ask the question, what exactly was it that happened on this mountain? Back in the 80s, one of the popular answers was, well, it was a UFO and aliens coming to visit. Forget it, okay? So what is it that happened on the mountain to Jesus? I want to suggest that the proper response is, who cares? Let me unpack that. I'll have to unpack that one. There was a very, very splendid Jewish biblical scholar and also scholar of the Dead Sea Scrolls, a Portuguese Jew who lived all of his life, virtually all of his life in England, named Theodore Gaster. And I heard him give a lecture once in which he said he was teaching at university in the United States. And right after Easter break, he said, just doing this as a, as a teasing kind of a pedagogical remark, he asked the Christians in the class, well, where were you? I was here. And they said, well, we were off celebrating Easter. And so to tease them a little more, he says, excuse me, I am from Mars. I do not know what you're talking about. What do you mean you were celebrating Easter? And they would respond to him, well, it's the death and resurrection of our Lord. And he would respond to them, keep your nose out of other people's private biographies. And then they would lose it. And he would say to them, you are not celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. You are celebrating your salvation. If it has nothing to do with touching you and your life, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so in that sense, I want to unpack the transfiguration because it is a promise to us, and that's why it matters. It's a promise to us. Now, let's look at the word transfiguration. The Greek word is metamorphosis. Let's look at some examples of metamorphosis in Scripture and in life, okay? It's the classic word used to describe the, 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 the process by which a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Could anybody possibly see a worm and think a butterfly eventually? You couldn't do it. St. Paul talks about the same kind of thing in 1 Corinthians, where he says, here's what it's like. Here's what it's like. It's sown in the ground as a seed. It grows up as a plant, a beautiful plant. Who could ever figure from a bulb that you could get a tulip? It wouldn't make sense to look at it and figure you could do that. And so Paul says, similarly, the body sown in the ground, so to speak, is a natural or a physical body. It will be raised as a glorified body that reflects the glory of Jesus Christ, which is what the disciples see for a brief moment on the mountain. For a brief moment on the mountain. In, in uh, The Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis talks about a young man who's tormented by sensual issues, and it's symbolized in the story by this nasty little red lizard dug into his shoulder, okay? The thing is finally killed and transformed into this glorious white stallion. Beautiful thing. And the commentary that is made then is, what is lust, after all, compared with the great joy and beauty and, and longing for God that desire can symbolize, just like the nastiness of a little lizard compared to a glorious white stallion? That's the transformation that we're looking for for ourselves. How many of us long to be transfigured, metamorphosed in that sense? And the glory that was seen in the face of Jesus is the glory that is promised to us. St. Paul is very strong on that in 2 Corinthians, which was the scripture reading we had for the Office of Readings today in the Breviary. So today we can celebrate the promise of glory that we can have in Jesus Christ. May we see his face and live even as the disciples rejoiced to see what they saw. Let us stand and pray.